Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you're listening to us from, lovers of freedom all over the world, I welcome each and every one of you to this very special address this very day. Today's day, it is the 12th day of December in the year of our Most High Elohim, 2020. The time now approximately is 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. This is a live presentation on a very special day that Chiku Kikabiyama has designed that we must do all we can to save ourselves from extinction, from a people who are determined to come down to take over the lives of the children of the Most High, a day that we have drawn a line in the sand from which we can never ever retreat. We are not going to surrender our land to Janjaweed. It is not going to happen, not now, not tomorrow, not ever. I welcome each and every one of you, and as I do so, and as it is customary with us here, I will urge you to welcome other people as well, because the whole world is listening. On all our platforms, they are listening. And if you are doing so, it is very, very important that you pay particular attention to the announcements we have to make this evening. Very, very important that we do so. But as always, and before we go any further, we must hand over our proceedings to the Most High. But before I do so, I must always say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. This is a very special broadcast, and of course, we must pray. And prayer we must, this very evening and always going forward. And I will pray in the language of heaven, because Chuku Kikabiyama is in control of all that we have been doing and will continue to do until Biafra is restored and all the suffering indigenous populations in the damnable zoological republic are set free. Chine ken nan ke plumi yeni ne chuko kikabe mba yeni ne fi wana jan hanso yam mambu ni ne. Onyo bona ni yana achi. Eli gwano wana gwa kebe hona nyagi ne pere gamra ge no miko ge bende ge neze pede ngozi. Ani we ne to yi. Agwa ne gato matu o joni ne ken di rong. I we nyan nyan do alan kedin nubo dono bochin keta. And you were not saying, he jammed money in the Tony Nedrahan, sorry. Oh, no, Bonan, Yaki, Kenny, and no Padrakaya. And you were not Okuri, Nassigan and Kamamani, Kelly, and Kojo, and Kelly. And you were not Jagemma. We're not to you, we're not so proge. Nisum, we're in a bundi, couldn't wear Zokum, or ha. Can have a checkwa, a lansoga, be a flonium, a chinekin, a Yikuranian qua. No meka taka kandi no we wala lanso biya fonyo na chine kena kebini ko. Abwa ne gato mato joni na kendi no. Mande na abwa mo bebeni ne di chicho yom na chine kena. Ni yene bun kendi de tuano botin keta. Ani we ne toyi. We na si yone wanyi na chine kena ke prumi yene ine. Onyo bona ni ana zopota. Onyo bona ni ya bo puya ni ne buye na amen. Ani we na seze kupe dengosi. Na ro tuto ne jamma na unsopuru. Si te ne bige bima ro ne bige bi. Ise. He said, he said, as I said this very evening, we are going to announce our preparedness to defend the land of Biafra. And having waited for very many years for the governors in our land, the entire East, by which I mean the Southeast and the South South to do what their counterparts in Yoruba land did, and even what the terrorist Miyeti Yala also managed to do, which they have failed to do up until this very day. We have decided to take it upon ourselves to defend the land of Biafra. We are determined and we are resolute, and we are not going to stop until we eradicate every trace of Fulani terrorism, every trace of hegemonic Janjawidism in our midst. Until that happens, 
We are not going to waver. We are not going to retreat. Not one inch, not one iota. We have come that we may do the bidding of the Most High for that which we are sent, or should I say born, in the first place. We are going to defend our land against the ravages of Fulani terrorism. We are going to defend the lives of our people against state-sponsored extrajudicial killings by the zoo and forces. We cannot allow what happened in Obi, Wattampo, in Aba, in Afaruku, in Emene to happen anymore. It can no longer happen in our land. Today, we are sending a note of warning, or should I say caution, to all those that delight in shedding the blood of their friends and innocent people right across the length and breadth of the zoological republic called Nigeria. That from this day onwards, any attempt to kill innocent people will be kindly reciprocated. Any attempt by the zoo army or the police to kill innocent populations the same way they did in Obi will, will be met in equal measure. Therefore, it has fallen upon this very generation to defend our land against the excesses and ravages of foreign terrorism and the hegemonic tendencies of the Sokoto Caliphate. For years, our mothers have not been able to go to the farms. Our daughters are being raped and cut into pieces. Everybody is aware of what transpired at Nimbo, at also Wani, what is happening right now in Delta, what is also happening in Ebony State and also in parts of Abia. We cannot allow it to continue. We have cowards and spineless, lily-livered idiots as governors. They have given over our land to the Janjaweed to occupy in perpetuity. This very generation, this very IPOB will not tolerate it. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. We would rather all perish and die than to allow our land to be taken over by the danger which cannot happen. This is a warning to all the governors who are conspiring due to one political consideration or the other to give our land to infidels and blood-sucking demons from the Sahel. It cannot happen. Not under our watch. It's not going to happen. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Our invaders, we are being told, come from Senegambia. We are being told they come from Mali. Some are from Niger Republic. Some are from Chad, according to the governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai. Therefore, we are setting up the Eastern Security Network to combat the excesses of these vagabonds and criminals from across the Sahel. Along the same lines as Amotekun and even the ones set up by the terrorists themselves, Mietiyala. What we are launching today officially before the congregation of a global audience is the Eastern Security Network. Not a Biafran army, no. Any time this army will march, we shall let the world know. But for now, and for our present purposes, we are there to defend the land of Biafra against these marauders from the Sahel, against a very determined incursion being led by terrorists, Fulani terrorists to be precise. What we are doing is no different from what Amoteku is seeking to achieve in Yoruba land. What we are doing is not far from what Miet Yala, the terrorists themselves, are seeking to achieve in the northern part of the damnable zoological republic. Our response to the endless cycle of insecurity, lawlessness, mayhem, Destruction of lives and properties in Biafra land is the launch of this very Eastern Security Network. This very day, in the coming days and weeks, you will see them in their uniforms. You will see them performing very critical and vital functions of ensuring the security of our land. I urge each and every one of you 
to give them your maximum cooperation. Attempts in the past to resolve these very raging Fulani terrorist incursion into our land has been very fragmented and piecemeal. It has never worked. Just a few days ago, we received reports that Delta State under Governor Ifan Yokoa launched what he referred to as Delta Safe Operation Delta Hawk. Only for Delta State. Whereas Yoruba governors launched Amoteku to safeguard the whole of Yoruba land. Miyet Yala launched their own vigilante group to safeguard the interest of Fulani Janjaweed all over the Zoological Republic. When you come to the east, by which I mean the southeast and the south-south, all the governors there are cowards. They have not done anything to secure our lives and our properties. That is why we felt it is necessary for us to do the right thing to protect our land, or else we will go the way that the Hausa people went. And we are not going to allow that, not under our watch. They have managed to fragment our people. They have managed to divide us. No governor in the Southeast or South-South has the courage nor the conviction to stand up to defend the people. Therefore, we must. Therefore, IPOB must defend our land to the very last blood in our bones. We are not going to stop. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever, until we read our farms and our forests of every vestige of Fulani Janjawidism. This evening, I'm announcing it, that our forests and our farmlands shall be free of Fulani terror presence. They cannot dwell in our bushes. They can bring down their cattle to do their business, after which we expect them to domicile in our cities and in our towns, to rent houses like any other group of people. If they decide to venture into our forests and into our farms, they will have us to contend with. We do not care who they come with. We don't care if they come with their army, their air force, or whoever is supporting this caliphate, relentless incursion into the south. We shall meet them head on. We shall confront them. I do not want to hear about any rape of a mother anywhere starting from this very night. I don't want to hear that any daughter of Biafra has been abducted anywhere in our territory because starting from this very evening, our forests and our farmlands are no-go areas for Fulani terrorists masquerading as headsmen. Because the Fulani very cleverly discovered that the only way they can defeat our people is by dividing us. That is why all the governors of the South South and the South East never got together to float any security outfit capable of defending our land. None of them did. Absolutely none. Even what their counterparts are doing in Yoruba land, they cannot replicate. What ordinary terrorist group like Miet Yala is doing, your so-called governors cannot do it because they are cowards, they are beholden to the caliphate. They have come to do the bidding of the Flanny Janjaweed and we cannot allow them in our land. If they want to serve the Flanny Caliphate, they can go to the north and do it. Not in Biafra, not anymore, not from this very night. That is why this very announcement is being made before the full view of the international community that they may understand how serious we are, how determined we are. As somebody quite rightly said, the only way to eat an elephant is by cutting it into pieces. The only way the Fulani Janjaweed can overwhelm us is by dividing us. If you are an agent of Fulani Caliphate, if you have come to do the bidding of Fulani Janjaweed in our land, I am asking you this very evening to retrace your steps. Because again, starting from this very day, anywhere their friends are killed, any governor, any police commissioner who tolerates the massacre of innocent people, 
will pay very dearly for it. Will pay very, very dearly for it. Do not underestimate our resolve because this evening, first of all, I speak as a human being who is possessed of a compatriot spirit and empathy with the suffering of human beings everywhere, especially in the zoo that Britain created called Nigeria. Second, I speak as a witness to the suffering of Biafrans at the hands of their so-called fellow citizens in the zoo called Nigeria. And what we want to make abundantly clear is that we are warning everybody who is a stakeholder in the zoo about our determination and our resolve to ensure that our land is defended. This is a resolution we have reached and it is cast in stone. I know that some people may say that Amotekun has some veneer of legal backing from their various houses of assembly in the West that we must also seek to do the same in the East. We are letting them understand this very data, that our land is under occupation. The land of Biafra is under occupation with the tacit approval of those you call your political leaders. They have sold us down the drain. They have benefited from the relentless onslaught of a government determined to exterminate Biafrans, especially their youths. We are not beholden to them because today we present to the world our first and our last, last line of defense against Fulani Janjaweed inspired murderous anarchy and mayhem across the entire Middle Belt and the South. The Eastern Security Network is here to bring to an end years of Fulani Miyeti Allah terrorism in our land. This very security outfit is modeled, as I have said before, along the lines of Amoteku in the West and even the vigilante group formed by Miyeti Allah themselves. Therefore, we are going to secure the entire Southeast and South-South, which is the former East, with the necessary assurance that crimes such as kidnapping, armed robbery, Illegal abduction of innocent people is brought to an end very imminently. We must bring all these things to an end. We must understand that years of torment has come to an end. I also appreciate the fact that some of you, those who are in the service or in the pay of the zoological republic, I know that some of you cannot fathom what we are about to unveil this very evening. You thought that pictures we are overwhelming after this broadcast, the entire video will be released. That all of you may understand how serious we are, that we have come determined to do the will of the Most High Elohim. What is our story? I ask. Our story is that we have been killed for very many years. Just days ago, Fulani Muslims, yes, Fulani, call them headsmen, call them Miyeti Yala, call them Boko Haram, call them ISIS in West Africa. They murdered over 100 rice farmers, purportedly Christians, in cold blood in Brown State. Am I upset about it? Of course I am. Are we grieving? Of course we are grieving. But it is very, very disheartening, very, very discouraging that up until now, the international community have failed to do something about the murderous outrage perpetrated by Fulani terrorists on a daily basis against innocent indigenous populations in the zoo called Nigeria. 
Sometimes I feel disconnected. Sometimes outrage and anger over these killings and the insincerity, the duplicitousness, and the profound lacking of seriousness, or should I say, stark appreciation of history. Our people, we do not learn. We have never learned. And until we rise up, all of us, one after the other, to support these very glorious efforts we are making to secure our land, our enemies will triumph over us. That heaven will forbid it. We will ensure that that will never happen in our time. You might ask, what is history? It is a very dark, hideous history of our people, banned by those who rose to power on the ashes of a genocide they themselves committed. It is a history banned in schools out of a sense of denial, yet it is a history still accessible to anybody and everybody who is willing to learn. On the trajectory that we have decided to embark upon, there is no going back. People are going to call, I know that for sure. There are those who may be interested to understand the reason why we do things the way we do it. In the fullness of time, they will come to appreciate the benefit of our tenacity, the benefit of our dedication and devotion to ensuring that Biafra land is secured. There we are those in the middle belt in years gone by who stupidly joined in committing genocide dishonestly, I must say, against the people of Biafra. They called it a civil war. They said they fought that very war to unite Nigeria. That same Nigeria is now killing everybody, or should I say, presiding over a reign of terrorism from Fulani Janjaweed. All of you are now regretting it. History is now repeating itself. What transpired against Biafrans, all the conspiracy against Biafra, is now being visited upon those very people that helped the Fulani Janjaweed terrorist caliphate to inflict what amounted to the second worst genocide in the history of the world. Some of them are weeping. We are all weeping. But none of you wept for Eastern Nigeria, so to speak, which is the land of Biafra. None of you wept for the Igbo when they are being massacred. None of you wept for the Efik. None of you wept for Anang. None of you wept for even Ejo and other ethnic groups that made up Eastern Nigeria. None of you ever, ever wept for us. We died that your useless Nigeria may be won, and today all of us are dying. But one day, weeping must come to an end. We have decided not to weep anymore. We have decided not to cry anymore. We have decided not to complain anymore. We have decided not to petition anybody anymore. But I'm sure by the time the Fulani Janjaweed gets exactly what they're looking for in our land, the world will be forced to intervene. This very security outfit is very, very proactive. It has been set up that very way. We are going to confront every enemy. We are going to confront anybody who, have, who will come to kill us. Because trust me, they will come. As somebody once said, there is a method in our madness. We will draw their army down into our land. Their flanks will be opened up. Their villages will be occupied by bandits and terrorists that they themselves created. That by the time they are done, and we have sent them packing from Biafra land, they will have no home to go to. All of them don't have no home to go to. The zoo is finished, and there is nothing anybody can do about it. We are not going to keep on weeping. This very evening, we want to remind the world that Fulani terrorists massacred us at Nimbo. They killed us at Ozowani. They came to my house with uniforms and killed over 28 people, as a result of which my parents died. These people will continue killing 
All of you are witness to what happened in Obibo. We cannot allow such to happen again. And any governor who foolishly sides with the zoo to inflict death, pain, and suffering upon our people will be held personally responsible, himself and his family. Himself and his family. And all of you that participated or encouraged the slaughter of the innocent at Obibo, you all will be held accountable at the right time. You cannot go free, including weak. You cannot go free. I assure you, I'm saying it so that the world can hear. So that the day you meet your nemesis, they will know that I announced it live on air. If they want us to go to ICC, we go to ICC. Any court in the world, they want us to go to, we we'll go there. But we cannot go free. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. And the same goes for any other idiotic governor that may want to kill our people. It will no longer happen. In the coming days and weeks, people are going to come out to protest. This very Eastern Security Network will provide much needed security for protesters across Biafra land. I repeat, they will provide security for prote peaceful protesters across Biafra land. Any idiot in uniform that wants to dare us, you're more than welcome to do so. But you will bear the brunt and the consequences will be very, very dare, I assure you. I assure you. Those of you that bore witness to what happened at Zakibian, at OD, MNA, Obibo, Isiama Farugu, in Aban, in Atempo must know that we cannot allow such senseless state-sponsored massacre of the innocent to continue. We can't allow it. We will never ever allow it. Therefore, I am placing the United Nations on notice, the EU, British government, the US government, that wherever the Nigerian army goes in again to massacre innocent people, we are going to retaliate. We will retaliate. Old people will be the last time any sitting governor anywhere will give the order for innocent people to be killed. Should that happen again, that governor will die. I am saying it so you cut out this very clip and send it to the ICC so they can have it there with them. And all these criminals, all these murderers, we shall meet them there. Should the deed arise. You cannot go about killing innocent people and you expect them to do nothing. It is impossible. Absolutely impossible. It cannot happen. We have come to die for what we believe in. We have come that we may be free. The zoo called Nigeria was created by a white man, not an African. Named by a white woman, not a black African woman. It has no right to exist. And anybody that kills in the name of Nigeria will be held responsible by us. Because it seems that the ICC doesn't want to do anything. It seems that all the courts of the world are silent as innocent people, men, women, and children are being slaughtered on a daily basis in Nigeria. We can't allow that to continue. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. This very Eastern Security Network is not, and I repeat, is not the army of Biafra. When the time comes for us to raise the army of Biafra, we shall announce it to the whole world. It is merely a vigilante group, the same way you have Amotekun and Miyeti Allah's national vigilante in Nigeria. That is why we must all be very, very measured in how we approach the issues that confront us at this very critical time of our history. We must remain resolute and determined. All those in the pay of Janjawi, they will come to try to discourage you from supporting this very wonderful initiative that none of your governors were able to do. As some of you will see in the video that will be posted or published after this very broadcast, you will see that we are united all the way from Kogi down to the Atlantic Ocean.
we are one, one family and indivisible. We are not going to allow ourselves to become distracted by paid agents of the damnable Zoological Republic. Self-defense is a constitutional right. Self-determination is not a crime, but a right under the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and customary international law. Therefore, I make no apologies. for pursuing Biafra relentlessly and determinedly. It can never stop. Those who underestimate our resolve do so at their own peril. As I've said before, we are not alive, we are dead already. When you see men, you will understand how determined we are. But there is one thing we have resolved to do. From today onwards, the death of every Biafran will be avenged. If you kill a Biafran, you will be killed. No matter who you are, we will keep pursuing you until you die. You will have no peace and you have no rest. I'm saying it on video that the whole world may understand. In 1966, the world kept quiet as Biafrans were slaughtered in their numbers, 300,000 in the north. 67 to 70, over 3.5 million people were killed. Nobody stood trial for it. Rwanda lost less than 100,000 people. ICC and international courts were convened to try those who were responsible, or should I say, those who were culpable. The same thing in Liberia. But because you killed us between 66 and 1970 and nothing happened, and from 1945 to 1966 and nothing happened. That was the reason, or should I say, that is the reason why the Fulanese will keep coming to kill us on a daily basis. Right now, from this day onwards, if you kill us, we are going to kill you. The men are ready. They have come to defend Biafra land, not to separate from Nigeria, no. We are going to accomplish that via a referendum. But if you come to our villages now to rape our mothers or abduct our sisters, you will die in the process. Any governor found aiding any of these people or giving our land to Fulani Janjaweed will be in trouble with us. Let me make one thing abundantly clear to all of you listening. We have resolved to die for what we believe in. And our belief is simple. Very, very simple that we are going to defend the land of Biafra with all our might. Not in pursuit of secession, as the idiots would say, but in pursuit of the defense of our land so that our mothers can go to the farm without the risk of being raped and torn to pieces. Some of you saw what happened at Uli. How a very beautiful, young Biafran lady went to the farm and never came back. She was not only raped, her body was mutilated, cut into pieces and strewn all across her farmland. None of you did anything. An embraced governor did nothing. Instead, he went along to appoint the same people that committed such heinous crime against the land itself into his cabinet. These are the idiots we are having to contend with in the land of Biafra. And we are saying enough is enough. If you are part of this very conspiracy to emasculate the children of God, to destroy Biafra land, then you are grossly mistaken. I know that the Fulani Janjaweed are not highly educated, they are not polished, they are not discerning. They cannot reason very well. Let me make this very, very clear. The Eastern Security Network is what it is an organized vigilante outfit, rather than restricting the activities of the defense of our land to maybe Enugu State or Delta State or even Bayasa State, for instance. We have resolved to defend the entirety of Biafran territory. Allow me to repeat because some of you are not educated enough to understand what we are saying. I am addressing this to the Fulani Janjaweed. Allow me to repeat. The Eastern Security Network is there to safeguard 
our land to stop Fulani terrorists from Mali, from Gambia, from coming into our land to kill us. Our mothers must return to their farms and our daughters must be able to move about very, very freely. The only way out of the mess people are in in Nigeria is that people should stop talking and doing the work necessary to free everybody from this Fulani inspired bondage. Today, people died, or should I say, a lawmaker was killed in Yoruba land. This same day, today, in Benue State, four people were killed. Even in Katsina, young boys were abducted and girls, as a matter of fact, from the dormitories. That is the level of insecurity in Nigeria, and people are dying on a daily basis. Are you going to sit down, just lament, talk about it, and nothing happens? Or are you going to join us to ensure that this reign of planet terrorism and insecurity is brought to an end? That is what we are for. That is why this very security outfit has been set up. And that is the work they are going to do. And nobody, and I repeat, nobody is going to stop us. Extrajudicial killings will no longer be tolerated. Any police commissioner, any commander of whatever army unit you are, you bring out your men to come and kill innocent people, you and your family will also die. Because that is the only language you idiots understand. When people keep where to kill them, you have stifled peaceful protests, you have killed people, you have lied about it, and you think you will go on killing innocent people. It can no longer happen, not in Biafra land. Elsewhere you can try it, not in Biafra land. Although the ICC have belatedly decided to investigate atrocities by the Nigerian army police and politicians, sadly their intervention has come very, very late. Very, very late indeed. A lot of people have died and a lot of families are angry and they are grieving and they want vengeance. And I do not blame them. And I can never blame them regardless of the enormity or gravity of action or actions they may take in order to avenge the death of their loved ones. Therefore, if you're a politician or a commander and you are involved in the killing of people, know that your life is no longer safe. I can assure you, cut what I'm saying and send it to ICC, send it to the US government, send it to everybody. I want us to go to that court in ICC and we present the catalog of destruction and mayhem and of terrorism perpetrated by the Nigerian government itself. And we'll see who will be convicted. If you think that the likes of Mwike can do your dirty job for you, then you are grossly mistaken. Because Mwike understands the mess that he's in. He can never be a free man until the day he dies. I'm saying it in the public so the whole world can hear. Mwike doesn't deserve to live. He doesn't. And that goes for any other governor that will preside over the killing of innocent people. They have made the zoo ungovernable, not us. Our job is, is to defend our land and that is exactly what we are going to do. You know, they always, uh, they love doubting us all the time. They think we are joking. But from tomorrow, the music will change. I thank all of you very much for listening this very evening. Those who doubt what we are doing or the sincerity of our efforts must understand that we have come and there is no going back. And that Biafra is going to be restored in our time, not through the efforts of the Eastern Security Network, but as a result of overwhelming support for the independence of Biafra via a referendum. Anywhere you attack our mothers again in our land, we will attack you back. If you leave us alone, we will leave you alone. We are not going to go into any war. No, not at all. But we are going to defend our land. 
I thank all of you very much for listening this very evening, morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where you are. And for those who can appreciate the enormity and gravity of the mess we are in as a people, we welcome your understanding. If you know you cannot do anything, you stay out of the way. From me, from here, good evening. I have a very special announcement to make. Very special announcement to make this very evening. From today going forward, my social media secretary and principal private secretary, Izuchen Okorafo, who is domiciled in Houston, Texas. From now onwards, she would manage all my social media accounts and handles and will be responsible to make sure that each and every one of us is part and parcel of this very effort we are making. In other words, she is going to be our social media czar, so to speak. And you will join me in wishing her the very best. Once again, thank you very much. I'm Mechuko Kekadi, I'm keep preserve each and every one of you as we move forward into a land that is blessed, into a land that will once again be free. Thank you very much, and good night to you all.